These are the solutions to the inequalities and absolute values and a module sample test. Question 1, you're asked to solve the following for C and graph the solution on a number line. So the first one we have 3 minus C is greater than or equal to 10. So here what we want to do is isolate the C. So we need to move the 3. So we'll have minus C is greater than or equal to 10. And 3 will go across as a minus 3. So we'll have minus C is greater than or equal to 7. We are then going to divide by negative 1. And dividing by a negative changes the direction of the inequality sign. So we will now have a less than or equal to. And we will have C. And 7 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 7. So our solution is C is less than or equal to negative 7. Because we have less than or equal to, we have a solid dot on the negative 7. And we're looking at values that are less than that, so we go to the left. So that's our solution. Part B, we have 5 outside of C plus 1 is greater than 4 minus C. So the first thing we need to do is expand our brackets. So we will have 5 times C is 5C, and 5 times 1 is 5. So 5C plus 5 is greater than 4 minus C. We now need to put all our C terms on one side of the inequality and the non-C terms on the other. So we will have 5C and our minus C will come across as a plus C is going to be greater than or 4 and our plus 5 will go across as a minus 5. So we will have 6C is greater than negative 1 and C will then be greater than negative 1 sixth. Because we've divided by a positive number, the direction of the inequality does not change. This time we have greater than and not equal to. So when we're graphing this solution, we're going to have an open circle. So if we use our scaling as sixths, we will have etc. And we want values that are greater than negative 1 sixth. So we have an open circle. And because we're greater than, we go to the right. So that is our solution there. This is C is greater than negative 1 sixth. Question 1C, we have a complex inequality. And we have our unknown variable in more than one position. So we're going to need to split this into two parts. So the first part, we're going to look at the first two expressions. And the second one, we're going to look at the second and third expressions. So we will have 5 plus 3c is going to be less than 2c plus 2. And we are also going to look at 2c plus 2 being less than or equal to negative 5. Solving the first inequality, we need to put all our C terms on one side of the inequality. So we will have 3C and our 2C will come across as a minus 2C is going to be less than. And we will have 2 and the 5 will go across as a minus 5. So 3C minus 2C is 1C is less than. And we have 2 minus 5, which gives us minus 3. Looking at the second inequality, we will have 2c less than or equal to 5 and our plus 2 will go across as a minus 2. So we'll have 2c is less than or equal to negative 7. So c is going to be less than or equal to negative 7 divided by 2 or c is less than or equal to negative 3 and a half. So graphing this on our number line, we start with 0. So the first one we have simply less than. So we have an open circle. So the solution itself doesn't include negative 3. So we have an open circle and it's less than. So we're going to the left. Our second inequality we have less than or equal to. So we will have a solid circle 
at three and a half. So we're going to then also go to the left because we have less than. Now the actual solution, both of these must be true. So we are going to only have this as our solution. And that's because the values between negative three and three and a half won't be true for both solutions. So here our solution is going to be C is less than or equal to negative seven on two. This is where both of the situations are true. Question 1D, we're solving an absolute value equation. As usual, we want to isolate our C term. So we will have the absolute value of C is going to equal 2 and our plus 7 will, will move across as a minus 7. So we'll have the absolute value of C is equal to negative 5. Now the definition of an absolute value is that it must be positive. And here we're saying an absolute value is negative. So there is no solution in this case. So we can't graph it. Question 1e, we have an absolute value inequality. The first thing we're going to do is isolate our absolute value. So we will have the absolute value of 1 minus c is going to be greater than or equal to 5 and our minus 2 will go across as a plus 2. So hence we'll have the absolute value of 1 minus c is greater than or equal to 7. Now we need to separate this into its two components and the first one is when the actual expression in the absolute value or the positive lot of the expression in the absolute value so 1 minus c is greater than or equal to 7 and the second expression is when the negative of this so negative of 1 minus c is greater than or equal to 7. So if we solve these two parts, we will have minus c is going to be greater than or equal to 7 minus 1. So minus c is greater than or equal to 6. We're now going to divide throughout by negative 1. So we need to change the direction of the sign. And we will have c is less than or equal to negative 6. For the second inequality, we will start by dividing throughout by negative 1 that's sitting in front of this bracket here. So we will have 1 minus c. Because we're dividing by a negative, we'll change the direction of the inequality. And 7 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 7. Now we will have negative c is going to be less than or equal to negative 7 minus 1. Or negative c is going to be less than or equal to negative 8. We then need to again divide throughout by negative 1 so we need to change our direction of the sign back and we will have c and negative 8 divided by negative 1 gives us 8. So our solution here is going to be c is less than or equal to negative 6 and also c is going to be greater than or equal to 8. So graphing this 0. So firstly we have c is less than or equal to negative 6. Now less than or equal to means we have a solid dot and less than means we go to the left. And our second inequality we have c is greater than or equal to 8. So greater than or equal to means we have a solid dot again and this time because it's greater than we are going to the right. So the solution is that graph there. Question 2 we're asked to graph the system of linear inequalities. So looking at our first inequality we have y is less than 2x. The first thing we should note is we have less than so we're going to have a dashed line and this is because the line y equals 2x is not going to be included as part of the solution. However we do need to draw this line and we need to find some points associated with the line. So have our x values and our y values. If we choose x equals 0 then y is going to be 2 times 0 which is 0 so we will have the point 0, 0. 
If we choose an x value of 1, then 2 times 1 is 2, and we will have the point 1, 2. And finally, if we choose x equaling 2, we'll have 2 times 2 is 4, and we will have the point 2, 4. Also, we need to decide which side of the line we're going to shade. We can't choose the origin here because it's actually on the line. So let's choose the simple point 1, 1. And this means x equals 1 and y equals 1. Looking at our inequality, so we have y is less than 2x. So our left-hand side, we have y, which is 1. Our right-hand side, we have 2x. So 2 times 1, which is 2. And 1 is less than 2, so this is true. And therefore, we will shade the side that actually contains 1, 1. Looking at our second inequality, so this time we have y is greater than or equal to x plus 4. So firstly, noting that we have greater than or equal to, so we are going to have a solid line when we sketch this. Looking at the line y equals x plus 4, we need some points again. So when x equals 0, y is going to equal 0 plus 4, which is 4. So we will have the point 0, 4. When x equals 1, we're going to have 1 plus 4, which gives us 5. So we'll have the point 1, 5. And finally, if we choose x equaling 2, then we will have 2 plus 4, which gives us 6. So we'll have the point 2, 6. This time the origin isn't included on the line, so to decide which side of the line we're going to shade, let's choose the origin, so 0, 0, so x equals 0 and y equals 0. Looking at our inequality, y is greater than or equal to x plus 4. Left hand side we have y which is 0, our right hand side we have x plus 4 or 0 plus 4 which is 4. This time, 0 is not greater than or equal to 4, so it's false. So we will shade not the side that contains the origin. So the solution will look like this. Firstly, let's look at our first inequality, and we have that y is less than 2x, so we will have the points 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 4, and you should label your points. Then, because it is less than or we have a dashed line that goes through those points. You should label your line, so once you've drawn your dashed line, you should label your line. We then looked at the point 1, 1. So 1, 1 would be in here, and we found that it was true, so we need to shade the side of the line that actually contains 1, 1. So we would need to shade all of this area here. Now it's a good idea with these solutions to work with more than one colour, and highlighters are excellent for doing your shading. So we then have this region here is y is less than 2x. If we look at our second inequality, so this time we have y is greater than or equal to x plus 4. So if we were to plot our points that we determined, so we have firstly 0, 4, then we have 1, 5, and we have 2, 6. Now because we have greater than or equal to, this time we'll have a solid line. So the points on the line will actually be included as a solution. This time we chose the origin as our reference point and we found it was false. So we need to shade the side that didn't contain the origin. So in this time we are shading this side of the line. And we should of course label the line. So y equals x plus 4 and we have that this region here is y is greater than or equal to x plus 4. Now the solution to the system of inequalities is the overlap. 
so it's this slightly greenish section here so this is where our solution is and in the solution the points on this line will count but the points on this dashed line will not count so it'll only be the area if you have any problems with any of the concepts in these solutions please revisit the sections in your text before completing your actual end of module test for inequalities and absolute values